shout a praise in this house. Come on. Come on, somebody. Yay. Give your neighbor a high five as you grab your seat. How many are glad to be in God's house this evening? There's no place I'd rather be in the house of the Lord. There's no place. Tell your neighbor, there's no place I'd rather be than in the house of the Lord. Give God some praise and glory. Welcome, everybody, Wednesday night service. I got a great word from you. Got a great word for you. Oh, my goodness. I hope you still like me after I deliver this word to you. We're family. You got to kind of you got to kind of love me. No matter what, you got to forgive me. But God gave me a great word. You know, I've been serving the Lord for over 30 years now. And it's been quite an adventure, let's just say that. In the beginning years, it was really really tough. It wasn't easy to live as a Christian. There'll be many times when I would leave church filled with the Spirit, oil still dripping from my head, handprints all over my T-shirt from oil, and I'd go home and do the same things over and over again. I told you I had a good message tonight. <laughs> So tonight I want to talk to not the church you, I want to talk to the home you. Because I have to believe, and I've, I've said I've been doing this for quite a while now, so I know that sometimes who we are at church is not who we are at home. And so there was a tremendous struggle in my life. Maybe your walk has been easy. God bless you. Mine wasn't. It was really, really tough. It was tough because at church under the anointing, it was very easy. It was easy to be good. It was easy to connect with God. It was easy to receive and, and even sometimes get slain in the spirit. And it was very, very easy. But when I got home, it wasn't easy. And what I discovered through the course of time was the fact that I was saved. I was born again. I was praying in tongues. But there was a separate issue going on, and the issue was this, and maybe you can relate. I was being chased. I want to talk to people tonight who are being chased by something. Being chased. I want to talk to people who are trying to escape something, trying to change their circumstances. People that are really, really trying to get free. Is there anyone here that like that tonight? Really, really wants to get free. Tonight you're going to get free. I want to talk to people that are trying to get out of a place. Tell somebody I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out of a place and I'm trying to get into another place. Because that's what we're doing. We're leaving an old lifestyle. And we're entering or being discipled into a new lifestyle. And there's no cookie cutter, quick fix way to do it. It's constant battle. It's constant warfare. And what's true for everybody is the devil doesn't want to let you go. The devil doesn't want to let you go. And so he will send henchmen, demons, spirits that will follow you as soon as you hit the parking lot. 
You could have a great time in here. But when you hit the parking lot, everything could change in a moment. Am I the only one? You guys are quiet tonight. Where am I? Where am I? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at Exodus chapter 14. Tell your neighbor, I'm being chased. Exodus 14, verse number 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the people fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their mind. And they said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go free from their slavery to us. And so the Pharaoh had his chariot made ready. And he took his army with him. And he also took 600 of the best chariots in all of Egypt. And he took with him all the other remaining chariots in Egypt. And he took with him officers over all of them. The enemy changed his mind. They were somehow under the impression that they were going to somehow waltz out of Egypt, out of their bondage, out of their slavery, like it was going to be some sort of cakewalk. Like there would be no resistance at all. They had plans for a better life. They had plans for prosperity. They had plans for their own country. But Egypt had other plans. And the Pharaoh, who's figuratively the devil, he took 600 of his best chariots and every chariot in Egypt. And he took the best horses and the best riders and he chased down God's people. He chased him down. And so when we read about the Exodus, or we read about how they crossed the Red Sea, or when we read about how they escaped Egypt, it seems glorious, but it wasn't. It was ugly. It was scary. It was intimidating. Because they were being chased. And so their freedom really had a sound to it. Freedom has a sound. It has a ring to it. It has a tone to it. And to them that were getting free or trying to get free, there was a distinct noise that was acquainted with their freedom. And it sounded a little bit like this. Play that sound. Do you guys hear that? It was the sound of hoof prints. It was the sound of their predators. It was the sound of the enemy in pursuit. You can cut that sound. That's what their freedom sound like. Boy, you guys are quiet tonight. If you plan on escaping, how many plan on escaping? If you plan on escaping, also plan on being chased.
because you're going to get chased. Because you have an adversary who refuses to let you go. You have an adversary who will change his mind about you. And your adversary, the devil, will send his armies after you. And he don't care where you've been or the glory cloud you've been in or who you've been talking to. He will follow you. And he will send his very best, if he has to, to chase you down. If you're not being chased, then you probably haven't left yet. You're still there. You're still stuck. You're still in bondage. You're still in addiction. You're still in lust. Because if you weren't, you would be chased down. How do you know if you're being chased? How do you know if you're being chased? Because the devil that you leave at the altar, he shows up at your apartment. You're being chased. And they get week after week, deliverance after deliverance. You take all the classes. Your freedom out the way. <laughs> I took freedom out the way. What's going on here? How'd you get here? You take it again. Go to the altar again. And again, and again, and he's still there. That spirit is still there. That spirit is, is chasing you. It's on assignment to you. And how many want to get rid of that thing? Egypt is chasing you. You may have left Egypt, but Egypt don't want to leave you. There's nothing easy about leaving your bondage. There's nothing easy about leaving your past life. They were prisoners for over 400 years. They were under the control of the devil for over 400 years. And now they're talking about, we want to leave you? The devil's like, you, we've been friends for a long time, homie. Where are you going? You've been living and running amok for years. And all of a sudden you think you're just going to waltz on out of here? You've been serving the devil for years. And then you want to break up with him. And you think he's going to leave you. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? I'm glad somebody knows what I'm talking about. Look at verse 8. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. What? That's like a mistake there. Did the writers make a mistake there? The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, who's figuratively... The devil, the Lord hardened his heart. And so he, the Pharaoh, pursued Israel, who were marching out boldly. The enemy is in pursuit of God's people. And he's in pursuit of them partly because the Lord hardened his heart. Now, why would the Lord do that? Shouldn't the Lord at least warn me? Before I leave Egypt? Well, people come to the altar and get saved. Should we just send them a, like a little warning? A little goodie bag with some maybe track shoes? 
Yeah, you thought these are look cool. These are, shoot, I got something to run from right here. Why would the Lord harden the heart of our adversary? Why would the Lord, our God, unleash an enemy to chase me? I'm messing your theology all up right now. I know. I know. I'll tell you one thing. You pray differently when you're being chased. You walk with God. Your walk with God is a lot tighter when you're being chased. You take all the classes when you're being chased. You don't miss a tithe when you're being chased. You give in some offerings when you're being chased. When you're being chased, your worship is different. When you're being chased, your praise is different. When you're being chased, oh, come on. When you're, you've never been chased before, when you're being chased, man, you're tight with God. People come to church for all kinds of reasons. Some of them to look cute, to hook up. They come to church for all kinds of reasons. But when you come to church because you have 600 demons chasing you, church to you is a completely different thing. When you come in through the doors running because the devil's nipping at your, at your heels, church to you means something much, much bigger than the person coming here just because they have to. That's why I was always in church. I never miss church because it's safe here. It's easy being saved here. It's easy being holy here. It's easy being spiritual. Everyone looks spiritual. Look around. Everyone. But it's when we leave. It's when the chase is on. And we all got to deal with our own demons. We all got to deal with our own adversary. And so God said, I'm going to leave you a few just so your prayer life can be kept up. Also, I stay more fit when I'm being chased. <laughs> oh, man. Some of us are out of shape here, right? Just saying. Maybe because you're not being chased enough. When, you, when you're being chased, you need to be a little bit light on your feet. You better be making some cuts. And you're more fit when you're being chased. You know a fighter will lose their form if they're not constantly fighting. It's important that a boxer or a fighter, they fight all the time. The moment they stop fighting is the moment they cease to be a fighter. My son used to go to a professional gym when he was younger, and we used to watch these boxers, and they train all year long. They never stop. They keep fighting and fighting and fighting, and the moment they stop fighting is the moment that they decline. And so God left you a demon to contend with. God left you a, like a sparring partner. Someone to keep you in shape. It's the same demons that once had you bound. That you're now fighting with. They were there all along. But you never noticed them before because you were knocked out. But now you're up again, and you're serving God, and you're doing a new thing, and you're, and you're walking with Jesus now. And so there they are. 
but they still want to control you. God left me someone to wrestle with. So I don't get lethargic. I don't get out of shape. Am I preaching to anybody tonight? Look at verse 10. The Bible says this, as Pharaoh approached the Israelites, they looked up. That's a mistake. They looked at the enemy. And there were the Egyptians marching after them. And they were terrified. And they began to cry out to the Lord. They took their eyes off of their destiny. They took their eyes off of where they're supposed to be going. God sent them out. God sent them in a direction. And they took their eyes off God and put them on the enemy. And all of a sudden, they're afraid. And so there they are, stuck, afraid, worried, tormented. We ain't going to make it. And they begin to complain about God even bringing them out or Moses even bringing them out. They say things like, why didn't we just stay in Egypt? It would have been better to live in Egypt than to die in the desert. They started speaking crazy like backslider talk. I tried, church. I tried, Jesus. I tried freedom at the way. I tried starting at the way. They start to complain like a backslider, make excuses why they can't endure, make excuses why they can't go on. They said, let's just go back. Forget it. Forget it. I tried going to the way world out. I got worse. It got harder. I thought it was supposed to be easier. It got harder. And then Moses steps in, their fearless leader, and puts them all on check. Look at what he says here in verse 13. He says, Moses answered the people. And he told the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see. Tell your neighbor, stand firm. Stand firm because you're about to see. Do not fear. Don't look with your eyes. Don't be worried about the sound that you hear, the hooves on the ground, the chariots and the horsemen. Don't be afraid of the sound. Put your eyes on the Lord. Be still. Stand firm and see because the deliverance of God is coming to you today. Who am I talking to tonight? I said, the deliverance of Almighty God is coming to save you today. And then he says this, watch this. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. Oh, my goodness. Now, I don't know when it happened, but somewhere along the way, everything left. What was once clearly visible and chasing me all of a sudden disappeared. And you'll never see them again. You mean never? Yeah, never. You mean like never ever? Yeah, never ever. Gone for good. And if you've ever been on the run, you know how good that feels. 
you know how good that felt. That's why to see the claps, they like go down. Some of you are still waiting for that feeling. Come on, some of you be somebody. Where's all the real people at? Somebody be real tonight. You'll never see him again. And then he says this, the Lord will fight for you. He said, the Lord will fight for you. Uh, the Lord, you fight in three ways. Number one, you fight with the Lord. Like you and the Lord, uh, like Batman and Robin or something, you're Robin. The Lord's Batman. And the Lord will fight with you. Not like Larry H. Parker or something. Let the Lord fight with you. And then you got the Lord will fight through you. Where the Lord will come upon you like he did with Samson. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you'll and rip, rip things apart in the spirit. The Lord will fight with you. The Lord will fight through you. But that's not what Moses is talking about here. He's talking about the third way the Lord fights. The third way is the Lord fights for you. I love that when the Lord steps in and I don't got to do nothing because Father God's coming down and he's going to handle some things. He's going to handle my adversary. He's going to handle my addiction. He's going to handle my anger. He's going to handle every single thing coming against me. I love when God does that. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day you stop running. And you start standing. Today's the day you stop being afraid. And you start believing. Because the same God who brought you out is the same God who's going to bring you in. It's the same God. The same God who delivered you is the same God that's going to bring you in to that promised land. Today the Lord is delivering you out of the snare of the fowler, out of the mouth of a lion, out of a fiery furnace. Because for some people, the Lord is about to drown all your enemies. All your enemies. And the very thing that's been chasing you, you'll never see him again. Never see him again. Because you know what? God has his own horsemen. God has his own horse. And it's a white one. And God has his own rider. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And God has his own weapon. And there's a flaming sword that comes out of his mouth. And it says he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I don't care how many forces the devil has. He can bring his very best. But when Jesus shows up to fight for you, let me tell you, game over. Game over over. So maybe that's the problem. You need to start calling on the Lord. Calling on Jesus. Save me. Help me. Rescue me. Amen. Last verse. You guys can stay. Let's all stay. You're all, what? It's 8.15? I got to let you out early because, you know, it's going to be a run. 
Some, I know some, I know some of you got to go. Some of you are going to race the kids' world. I know, I know. Come on, baby girl. We got to go. You know how this goes. Verse 15, we're going to close. Then the Lord said to Moses, the people said to Moses, and then Moses said to the people, and now the Lord is speaking. And the Lord's saying this, why are you crying out? Why are you crying out to me? <laughs> Made me feel like a baby reading that. Why are you crying to me? Why are you being such a crybaby? <laughs> Stop crying. Tell my people. Tell my people. The Lord said, tell my people. Tell my people. To move on. Stop crying. Stop worrying. Stop doubting. Stop fearing. Stop crying. And start moving. Move. You got somewhere to be. You got nations to conquer. You got cities to invade. You got demons to fight. You got giants to fight. I'm taking you somewhere. It's time to stop crying and start moving. Don't be distracted by the sound that you hear. Don't be worried about 600 things chasing you. I need you to get across this sea. Because your destiny's not here, it's over there. The plan hasn't changed. It's the same plan. I'm going to come in, I'm going to strike the Pharaoh, and I'm taking you out. So keep moving. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Because by the time that they get to the other side, by the time that their adversaries are swallowed up in the sea, by the time everything that was chasing them and trying to prevent them from getting free was swallowed up, by the time they get to the other side, they break out in praise like never before. There's a praise that breaks out like never before. And you know... I know people when they're free because they have a lot of praise, a lot of praise. It's hard to praise God when you're not free. It's hard to clap. Your arms are heavy, I know. I know. It's hard to praise God when you're not free. But when you're free, there's so, you got something. 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 You should praise God while you're getting free. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. No matter what you hear. Tell them, no matter what you hear, keep moving. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't even talk about giving up. Don't even talk like a backslider. Don't even talk like that. We ain't giving up. We've already left. We got to keep moving. If you're in this auditorium tonight, and for you it's been hard. Maybe for others it's, it, it's been easy, but for you it's been hard. It's been hard. It's been laborious. 
and you feel like you're the only one. Everyone else is free but me. Or at least it seems that way. And tonight, God's going to swallow up that demon that's been chasing you. And you could you can turn in your track shoes and get yourself some good church shoes. You ain't getting out the run anymore. You're here tonight, and you say, Pastor Joe, you're right, I am being chased. And the life that I'm living here, it's very tough living it out there. It's very tough. And I need God to step in and fight for me. If that's you here tonight, don't even think about it. Just come on up here, and let's get you prayed for. If you're online, just write in the chat, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. A victory, I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see. Lift your hands all over this auditorium. If you're here at the altar, lift your hands up high and say, Jesus, I need you to fight for me. I surrender to you. I surrender my life to you. I give myself completely over to your will. Forgive me of every single trespass, every sin. You know my heart. You know I'm, I'm trying, but I fall short. But I know that you're there to fight for me. And I pray, Jesus, that you would step in and take control over this battle. Come into my life like never before. I receive the goodness, the peace, the freedom the liberty that comes through your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come, empower me, fill me, set me ablaze. I'm following Jesus, and I ain't going back. If you said that prayer and you meant it, give God a big shout of praise tonight. Touch your neighbor real quick. Tell him, I'm moving on. I'm moving on tonight. So Pastor Robert's going to close. Don't make it a mad dash to the parking lot. How many enjoyed that word tonight? Wasn't that great? Uh, being chased, I'm moving on. Thank you. Give it up for Pastor Joe. Great word. Great, great word. For the ones that haven't met him yet, he's our... He's our Arrowhead pastor, our downtown pastor downtown, and our altars are going to continue remaining open. If you need prayer, please come down. We'd love to pray with you guys. You guys, Pastor Marco, he's going to kick off a new series this, next, this Sunday coming up. Don't miss it. Make sure the growth track, we're starting this Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning, you can start your growth track. 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Freedom at the Way. Next Tuesday, you can start your growth track as well, Sunday or Tuesday. We love you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you?
Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you back Sunday in the house of God. Discipleship, go on the app, sign up. These classes are going to fill up really fast. Go on the app, sign up. If you need prayer, come on down. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray with you guys. Let's move on. God bless you guys.